Good evening and welcome to We're Not Really Here. Manchester City play their penultimate game at home, knowing that second place is secure. And there's been a few changes to tonight's team. Four, in fact, may be possibly thinking about the FA Cup clash, the semi-final coming up on Saturday against Arsenal. And what a show we have in store for you this evening. We've reached full capacity in the We're Not Really Here studio. I've got Natalie Pavlek joining me and our special guests this week are Jolien Lescott and Sean Gota. What a lineup! What a treat for us all. And we can talk about the current lineup that Manchester City have placed. What have we got, Natalie? We can. Thank you very much, Kel. Yes, the team news is out and you're getting it here first. So starting in goal tonight, making his 33rd start of the season is Edison. Um, he's also looking to keep his 15th clean sheet this season as well. In defence, you've got Cal Walker. And Benjamin Mendy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they retain their places from the Saturday's game against Brighton. And then coming in, a new centre-back partnership there between uh, Nicholas Otamendi and John Stones. Moving into midfield, we've got, we think, three new uh, partnership in the middle of um, midfield there that we've not seen this season quite yet. It's Fernandinho, Gundogan and David Silva. Um, and a lovely fact about David Silva is he's, he's assisted five goals in just six starts against Bournemouth. Mm. We like that. Thank you. Yeah, I love, love, love a good stat. <laughs> um, and then moving up forward, we've got Bernardo Silva. Starting today, Phil Foden. And then up front, we've got Gabriel Jesus, who, of course, bagged his 20th goal of the season against Brighton. What a team sheet. And actually, what, what a few weeks it has been for the club. I mean, actually, I feel like it's kind of one of the most consistent teams we've had. I know it's four changes, but usually we've been used to seeing six or seven. So are I'm you... getting six changes, you know, Kel. Are you getting six? Yeah, I'm getting six changes. Go. go on. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Hang on, Edison. I believe you, Nelly. I believe you. <laughs> I mean, you are, you are the stats person, so you're probably right. I'm Absolutely. getting in my ear, just quality. <laughs> quality. That's all I'm getting is quality. Um, but what do you make of tonight's team, Sean? Well, whoever City play, you know, the quality. I mean, yes, yeah, Stones comes in, Artemendi comes in. Again, experienced players. Uh, they'll be looking to get a good... 90 minutes under the belt if, if, if the manager so thinks. Uh, Gundogan, I see Fernandinho holding role and Gundogan a little bit further up. Uh, always pleased to see Phil Foden because I think this, this kid is just ready and needs more minutes. So really excited about Phil Foden playing and, and Jesus looking, you know, score another goal or two and, and keep his run going. And Jolie, what do you make of that centre-back pairing there with Nicholas Otamendi and John Stones getting a start tonight? Yeah, previously it hasn't done as well as we would have liked but the last game was that um the last home game who was that it was newcastle newcastle, newcastle they yeah. did especially with john stones coming back into the team um exceptionally well and i to touch on it then as a defender if your performance goes unnoticed you've had a good game kind of thing so i'm sure they'll be looking for the same tonight another clean sheet with edison gives edison the opportunity to to kind of set the record this season with 15 clean sheets um i think the current record's 14 so it's a strong team as as sean said whoever the um pet puts out is capable of winning this game. We we saw it, I think, for the first time in a long time against Brighton, uh, and that is Fernandinho sitting in that holding role, which we've, we've not been used to seeing. And, of course, you know, it goes without saying that I think Rodri has come in and really filled that gap, which is a tough one to fill. But I do feel we've missed seeing him there as well as he has done at centre-half, Sean. Yeah, well, Fernandinho just reads the game so well. He, and and it, he's, you know, that whole position normally used to be somebody that was a hard tackler, but he's sort of a clever player. Mm. He sort of reads where you're going to control the ball and sort of gets his body in between you and the ball, or he just sort of nicks it away from. So his cleverness, his intelligence of understanding where you're going to control it to win it. And then when it's there to be a hard tackle, he, he's got that about him. And you, you, you can tell with his personality, he's got that steelness about him. So, you know, a great player to be sitting there. And what I like about him is that he do, he doesn't just go square or go back. Every now and again, you see him knock a nice little ball forward, not just a little 15, 20 yard pass, but he hits the sort of 30, 40 yard passes, and uh, it, you just think this guy's a really complete holding midfielder. So complete, and actually, I've also learned over the years that how difficult that role is to play in a normal team, let alone in a Pep Guardiola team. And, and how instrumental is that position to the way that City play? I mean, we rotate, don't we, between Gundogan, Fernandinho and Rodri, but no one does quite do it like Fernandinho. 
No, and I think since he's come into the Premier League, he's one of the best, if not the best, at doing that job. Um, like Sean said, kind of when City have the possession they have, when we've become accustomed to uh, under Pep, it leaves like a, tri uh, a triangle at the back. So you have the two set halves and you have him in there and it allows your full backs to, to push on as high as they want. And obviously your wingers come inside. So it leaves just the balance there. And he's, he's, he's clever enough to make a foul. He recognises that, oh, we're outnumbered. We're potentially going to be outnumbered. Let me just make the foul, stop the game. And it allows the team to get back into position. So he brings kind of the fiery steel of it, but the intelligence, I know, to just to break up play in various styles. And we've got to talk about the game that's coming up against Arsenal. And there's a couple of players missing um, De Bruyne being one Sterling on the back of that brilliant hat trick do you think it is a team that looks like he's got a slight eye on that fixture Sean coming up well clearly he has you know with De Bruyne and Sterling as you say being, being rested I personally feel you know the best way to rest the players get a win so the team winning the game and whether they started or not as long as City were to win tonight then that's the best rest for, for the next game. I never felt tired going into the next game having, having won <laughs> the previous game. So, it, and either way, I mean, again, these players, are, they're used to the rotation, so they'll take it in stride and know that they're going to be right for, for, for the next game, for the, uh, the FA game. Do you not think Sterling will be a, a little bit gutted to, to be not starting, kind of, you know, having felt them three goals and, and got the hat trick? Do you not just think that will still be in there a little bit? Yeah, a little bit, because I think, every, well, I know every player wants to play every game, but Pep picks his team and rotates it so often. I don't think any player would ever feel like they're being dropped. We've seen, again, and we don't want to dwell on mistakes, but we've seen Zinchenko uh, cause the error at Southampton, and then he started the next game. So yeah. Pep picks his team on who he believes will beat He's picked his team on who he believes will beat Bournemouth. Um, but also, in the back of his mind, he's got to look at the games coming. And it's obviously important game on the weekend and then the Champions League after that. So there's massive games to be played. Um, let's hear them from one man that we've just been speaking about, Fernandinho. Here is what he had to say ahead of tonight's clash. Right, fine. Uh, Fernandinho, for a long time now, the club's been playing under a, a cloud of suspicion. What's it like hearing that that suspicion has been lifted? Uh... Relief. I think it's uh, the right word is relief. Of course, we knew from the beginning because we heard from the, our directors and uh, we trust them. So they asked, they asked us to, to calm down and uh, to trust them. So they're going to do their, their job. So they did pretty, pretty well. So, but I think the most important now we are feel relief and uh, so just carry on, keep going, and uh, we'll see what's going on now. What's the motivation this evening on the pitch? Champions League secure, second place is secure, so what drives you on? So there are many things we can point to as a motivation for, for example, next Saturday, FA Cup semi-final against Arsenal, and uh, to keep playing the same way we are playing since uh, we resume the Premier League and uh, to keep playing the same the same way we always play at home so quality football try to keep the ball try to create a lot of chance to score the goals it's the most important try to keep the clean sheet because it just gives some confidence for us as well are you a center back or a midfielder now you know the sheet already? The I don't know. I know you're playing but I don't know where so you see <laughs> have you had to get used to playing midfield again yeah, I've been, I've, so I play against Southampton. So the last, the last time against the last game against uh, Brighton, I come on as a midfielder as well. So maybe I come back in this position again. You dealt very well with the sprinkler as well. When I was young, yeah. <laughs> well done. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. Fernandinho there giving his thoughts ahead of tonight's game against Bournemouth. We have got so much going on on the world of the online web in the form of socials. Natalie can tell us more. Thank you very much, Kel. Yes, we think Fernandinho definitely said sheet there as well, by the way. Sheet. Um, so <laughs> that. Sheet gate. Sheet. Um, so loads going on on social media. We absolutely love getting all your tweets in, all of your pictures. I love seeing your setups at home. So do get onto social media, take a picture. How are you watching the game? And let us know. Hashtag WNRH. Now, some of the ones that we've got coming through already, I'm loving this one. It is Joel Yates, and he says, ready for an Otamendi goal. 
Yes, I would love that. And he's there um, with his scarf on as well. So why not? Always a chance to wear your city scarf, even in July. Um, and another great tweet coming through from, from Kavita Chung. And now I love this. Her picture, it looks like a living room and she's got a montage of all the players hanging up uh, like a Christmas decoration. And I think that's a Christmas decoration I would probably buy, to be fair. Um, it looks wonderful. Um, so thank you for that, Kavita. She's saying time for another big win tonight. And then we've got Mikey Miles and he's saying the We've Got Guardiola song is going to go off when the fans are back. And I totally agree, Mikey. I, pref I presume you're talking about Pep's incredible press conference from yesterday and then we've also got rachel doyle and she says come on city and she's got nine love a little nine picture montage collage there of all different ones and i think that's her in moonbeam moonchester uh, with a premier league trophy next to a badge so that is um, lovely as well thank you for that rachel so so do get involved and also let us know your thoughts and feelings about the game tonight any predictions that you have as well and it's hashtag wnrh we are shortly going to hear from Pep Guardiola Pardon me. <clears throat> ahead of tonight's game. And if you haven't seen yesterday's press conference, when you've got a spare five minutes, get the popcorn out. It's very enjoyable. Um, before we get to that, though, there's something Fernandinho mentioned that I wanted to ask you both about. Is that when you've changed to a position, which he's gone from that holding role to centre half, and then kind of got into a rhythm of playing that position. How difficult is it then to transition back into that old position? Obviously, it's, it's, it's in his muscles, but is yeah. it difficult? He'll it, be there. Within the game or two, it will come back to him, the natural side of it. But it'll be more difficult to go back into midfield just through the physicalities of it. Obviously, right. there's a lot more movements. There's a kind of a lot more distance you'll probably be covering. Um, so in that aspect of it, it'll be more difficult physically. But in regards to his intelligence and his knowledge of the game, it won't take him long to adapt. And did you ever in your careers have a position change for a while? Or, or were you always, did you stay to the same position? I know you're a goal scoring let's not, let's not defender, Julian. <laughs> so you, we might play the front, but Sean, were you, were you always up, up from? Uh, no, I got a nosebleed if I went back to midfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called like, goals. Yeah, that's yeah. What it's, it's called it's goals. Like, yeah, get, I can't go back there, surely. Right? The nose is bleeding. Right? I'm out of there. I'm in the wrong area. Um, no, pretty much right up the middle. Uh, the odd occasion, sometimes playing wide, but it was one of those uh, not happy like oh, wide. But nowadays, players that play wide, uh, they, they you know they got the intelligence to run in off the line, and, and we see it a lot more because Pep has essentially brought that, and people have seen it and learned from it. Whereas before, wide players typically got it wide and went down the line and crossed it. Uh, but no, they didn't get too much involved. So Julian played what striker as yeah, well. Yeah, I played a few positions, but never centre midfield. But like everywhere else, I played centre forward. Left back was probably the biggest change. Um, I even got some England caps at left back, and that's something. Stop it. I even enjoyed <laughs> that much. It. I like to run forward and that. But in regards to feeling natural, yeah, centre half was was key for me. He doesn't have a name, a, a day named after him, though, does he, Sean? Like oh, you, so stop there it. you go. <laughs> hey, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one player that is, um, Pep himself has said, he can play anywhere is, of course, Phil Foden. And when we see him on the team sheet, I'm often like, OK, where is he playing today? Is he on the left? Is he, is he in the middle? Pep says, Jolie, and he can play everywhere. Do, do you agree? I, I don't want to see him Phil Foden at centre-back. I don't want to see him. <laughs> no. I, I just don't want to see it. But no, in regards to anywhere forward thinking, 100%, he has the ability, the intelligence, the, the physicalities at the moment. He's showing that he can adapt now and, and get a run of games. And whatever we speak about Phil, however we speak about Phil, he's going to underestimate what, he's, what he can achieve. He's going through a bit of a drought at the moment, should we say. He didn't score the last game. Or, so he's a bit of a drought I'm for Phil. He's celebrating it. <laughs> but in regards to what he brings to the team, his energy, his ability, he, he just fits right in. He, he looks like he's been playing for, for years and not just obviously over the past, what, 18 months, should I say? Where, where, would you, where is Phil's best position, Phil, like I'm on first name basis with him, my mate Phil, but where would You're you say Phil. is the, the best position for Phil for you, Sean? That's an excellent question, you know, because when I've seen him play, I just see him excel, and I think because he's so hungry to, to show, show Pep, show the world that this is what he has to offer, when he's out wide, he offers um, the, the intelligence to come in off the line and, and be creative. I think more central, is, is where I think his best position is. Yeah. Um, but again, I just love seeing him on the field because he, he offers so much. So, But I, I would say central midfield uh, in the attacking side where yes. we see the best of him. Yeah, I was going to ask as well, a similar question in, in regards to Bernardo Silva. Um, 
obviously we think he's playing out on the right tonight. Um, he plays in central in the middle as well. Uh, Jolien, where do you think his his best position? And what do you think about um, his you know moving forward for Bernardo Silva? Obviously, when um, the King David Silva leaves at the end of the season. Yeah, in regards to moving forward, I think him and, and Phil will kind of like cement or kind of fill that void. Not that you can, but as best as they can. I love uh, that as well. David needs two players. To yeah, fill that, his yeah, he's yeah. that good. He's <laughs> yeah. that good. But um, um, in regards to what he offers, again, a lot of energy. Um, we, we've seen in previous games, especially the games against Liverpool uh, over the last couple of years, he, he's been man of the match uh, and he hasn't scored. So he, he brings a lot of energy and a lot of quality, as I said, he, he, he can do a lot of stuff uh, and it goes unnoticed until you say you get to the big games and when you, you see him and then he gets him out of the match and he doesn't unnecessarily score goals. Yeah, Bernard, Bernardo Silva. I think with, with City players nowadays, you, whether they come through the academy or whether they're, 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 they're brought in, they have to tick so many boxes. You know, and the boxes that the midfielders have to tick, I can play wide, I can play midfield, I can play striker for a game or two. And these players, so whether on the right, the left, in the midfield, you look, you think, well, what's his favorite position? Because he's playing well. He's playing wide, he's playing well. He's playing in the midfield, you know, in the eight or ten row, he's playing well. And even when they play up front, you think, I'm sitting there thinking, he can't play my position well. <laughs> I'm going, God, he's man in the match. <laughs> These guys just come with this intelligence. They do. Yeah, 100%. There's probably only what, two or three players in the squad that don't play multiple positions. We haven't seen Gundogan play anywhere else apart from his role. We played him play different roles in the midfield, but he plays central midfield. Um, We've seen John Stones play multiple positions. Atamani's probably only played at half, but everyone else has played multiple positions and performed. It's not just a case of I oh, was just playing there for the sake of it. They've actually performed well. What? Well, how much of that then is the footballer's ability and the coaching from Pep Guardiola? It's both. It's a mix of both. You have to have a certain amount of intelligence to be able to absorb the information, but the kind of the tactics and the know-how and, and Pep's putting out not simple instructions because if there was, we'd all be doing it. <laughs> but in regards to what he wants for his team and his personnel and where to be when the ball is in certain areas, if you've got a certain amount of intelligence, it's easy to adapt. So in regards of the combination, <sighs> What's more important, I would say the tactics, because all these lads will have intelligence. All of them will have the minimum requirement in order to play in the Premier League. So Pep's just enhancing that. And I guess actually, because we were always talking about City with changing players and the constant rotation, but actually what never changes is the system and the framework. So even though within the system you're changing parts left, right and centre, the engine is still the same engine. And I guess that's why we adapt better than people think we do with constantly having six and seven players in and out, which I guess would be difficult for other teams if you were constantly changing that many personnel. And that's exactly it. I mean, no matter who's playing, they understand. If it's uh, Walker playing right back or Cancelo playing right back, they, they understand their rules. And, and sometimes the tactics is, I need you when water possession is pushed into, into that midfield area so, so we're able to still press and win the ball back, etc. And sometimes the responsibility as a right back is, I need you to push high and wide and allow... Bernardo Silva or one of the wide players who tuck in in this game because tactically that's what's going to work. Uh, so spot on, absolutely right. The tactics is, is so huge, but the players understanding their roles within, within the tactics. We had um, Paul Dickoff in on, on the last show and he was saying how this squad he feels is the strongest city has ever been because not only do you have the two players in each position, but in each position, each player offers something different. You know, Walker to Cancelo, Stones yeah. and... I, I see where he's coming from, but... The evidence wouldn't support that. The fact that we've, we haven't had Laporte this season yeah. and we haven't been able to fill that void. So there's probably that area um, is probably the only one where you would say, OK, we're not as strong as where we could be. Um, but in, in regards to the, the collectiveness of the squad, 100% it's as strong as you're going to see in the Premier League. And But the great thing about Pep and the team is that if you get to a final and you pick... City's so-called best 11, it would be different if the team was different they were facing. And that's the beauty of what Pep sees and, and is able to uh, make his players adapt to. He picks the team that he feels will beat the opposition, not his best team necessarily. Well, let's hear from the man himself. Here's what Pep Guardiola said before tonight's game. Well, Pep, you've secured your place in the Champions League for next season. You've done that on and off the pitch. You've actually secured second place as well. So, what is the motivation tonight? What makes tonight important? The motivation, I think the players like to play football. And once they play, they, they, you know, they want to play. They play, try to win for a the competition, for Bournemouth itself, for the older contenders, and try to play good. Have you picked a team with the FA Cup semi-final on Saturday in mind this evening? Well, a little bit, but some of the players to play are going to play next Saturday. It's just because since we came back after lockdown, 
every game I rotate five or six players, so it's a continuing the same same way. Is it an opportunity for one or two, maybe a John Stones to force his way back into the team for the FA Cup, maybe even for next season? Yeah, of course. So he knows that uh, we trust a lot with uh, with him, but it was a many, many, many months injured and it's difficult to take the rhythm, but he played the last games. Uh, last game, 30 minutes, the day before playing 90, and today is going to play again, so it's good for him. As you said yesterday in your, sorry, this is briefly clear, as you said yesterday in your press conference, as a club, you've been playing under suspicion for quite some time. <laughs> now that you don't have that suspicion, what effect might it have on the players? How might it help them? The players are, are, are incredibly satisfied and happy as well because next season going to play in Europe in the Champions League and they like it, of course, so uh, we, we play for, for win the, the Premier League, we were on the table because it was one open and it was so strong, uh, we were not consistent like years before, but on the other side, uh, we secured the second place, the Qualifying Champions League and we won two titles and we are playing for two more. Also tonight, do you have to be mindful of the fact that it's a big night, not just for Bournemouth, it's a big night for Watford, it's a big night for Aston Villa, it's a big night for West Ham, all those teams at the bottom? But I think with this, this combination for the, the champion, the qualification for Champions League, Europa League, and no relegation, I think until the end, 90% of the teams play for something. And I think this is good. Uh, because, you know, a lot of teams... Uh, Four or five or six, they are not secure to stay in the Premier League, and the battle to qualification, the the last two position Champions League is open for the Europa League. So that's why until the end will be will be a nice nice battle. Thank you, Pep. You're very welcome. Thank you. Did you get wet? No. Oh. Did he get work? I don't know. Um, that was Pep Guardiola giving his thoughts ahead of tonight's game against Bournemouth. Of course, last time we were out, it ended up in a 5-0 win, which was it was just another complete performance, wasn't it, Julian? Yeah, again, it's, it's strange that we're getting used to seeing it happen week in, week out, and, and it doesn't surprise us. Um, and again, teams are, are not, barring the Newcastle FA Cup performance, teams are not sitting back and trying to con condense the defeat. It's like they're trying to play, and I think that plays into City's hands. I think the more space you give Man City... Uh, as a team, the more open you are, susceptible to, to conceding goals, and we know they can, can see, um, score goals at any given time. I, I actually think even when teams sit, I think they're playing to City's hands. <clears throat> and excuse me, the reason I say that is because I think City, <clears throat> I think Pep works on getting players in pockets mm -hmm. and the pitchers they understand. So, so even like playing today where there's no crowd, for, for City it's an advantage because it's like they know the pitchers. They know the pitches, whereas if you're playing and you're playing off the cuff, Julian gets the ball, I make a run, I don't know if he's going to give it to me. He has that feeling that he'll give it to me or not. But I, but there's certain things that happen in City when we play, you can see that it's being worked on. It's, re, it's repetitive. Mm -hmm. So um, for City... That's why we've got the best coach. It really is. I mean, and it is like poetry in motion when, when you are watching it. And do you think that's been key to being able to overcome the teams when they do put 11 men behind the ball? Because I remember earlier on, and especially in Pep's first season, and, and, and we've seen it in times, maybe not this season, but last and the season before, we have sometimes struggled to find that one stroke of David Silva genius to unpick that defence. But is that the reason why you think it's become easier for us now because of that repetitive training? I think, you know, Pep's got a number of plans. A plan if a team wants to play an open game against you, if they want to park the bus, he's, he's got a plan for that. And what, I've, what, I've, what I learned was even watching the Southampton game, they actually did something quite unique, uh, which I learned about Ralph as a, as a manager. But I'm pretty sure Pep will, will see that and they won't get the better of us the next time <laughs> because he's, he's just that clever as, as a manager. So whether a team has an open game against us, he's got a plan on how we attack. If they want to sit and park the bus, he's, you know, he's, he's got a rhythm. The players have a rhythm and a pattern and players make certain runs and then all of a sudden uh, there's a through ball, a cross, uh, you know, and, and it's a go. <laughs> <laughs> Literally before you know it, it's yeah. just happened right before your very eyes. Well, we'll get on to the goals in a second, but actually I think it's nice to just spend a moment actually saying how strong we have looked defensively, I think, over the last few games you mentioned about Edison with the clean sheets and is very much in contention for a golden glove do you think because the victories have come at such as in, in a surprising moment say against your Norwich or or your Southamptons or the Tottenham's that's detracted from actually m most of the time the defense is quite solid oh, definitely yeah um, and, I, and I think it, 
like any team, you're going to get chances. There are going to be occasions and games when you get the odd chance and the Southampton goal was is worthy to win any game. Uh, the yep. quality that he showed, so you've got to give that credit there. But over the, the course of that game, City should have scored two or three goals. You know what I mean? The keepers are having to have man of the match performances to keep clean sheets. So that's a credit there. But in regards to our defence against the top teams, um, when teams want to play and playing to win and not necessarily playing not to lose, I think that just gives City more opportunity to have the ball. And obviously when you have the ball, you, you, you can't concede. So I think Pep's installed that mentality into the team that you see how hard they uh, work to get it back. And then it obviously allows them to kind of recover and when they've got the position. Yeah, and there's an incredible stat. We've won our last five home games, um, scoring 19 goals and not conceding a single goal. I mean, that's oh just in insane. Do you say that again? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> say that again. I just can't breeze across yeah, like, yeah. like just every team does. That that but that's the thing; these stats are kind of just so normal now. Like you would not even surprise them. We have to kind of really identify what that is, and teams don't do that. Like regardless of who the history of the Premier League, teams don't just come and score 19 goals, not concede, and yeah. just brush teams aside with, without any kind of second guess. Does it feel then, going off those results, because I've asked you this a couple of weeks ago, we're saying like, I, I still, and it's only because, you know, you want you have standards high, and who am I to have my, you know, <laughs> where my standards matter, but that it still feels like we haven't unlocked the full potential of this team. Like, there's still, for all the amazing things they're doing, it still feels like there's a there's another level, but I f are we starting to, you think, get there now over these last few weeks? I think if we complete the goal in Champions League, I think, yeah, we're there. But in regards to, to looking at it, the bigger picture, you only can really judge City now against the best teams. Yeah, they can lose games against Southampton and Norwich's, um, anyone can, but when you're putting in performances and getting results against Liverpool like that, no one else is doing that. No one else is capable of that. Not even Barcelona in their kind of hey, that you're looking and thinking, would they beat Liverpool like that so convincingly it could have been any scoreline. So I think that's the bit that impresses me the most is that against the big teams that they can punish them. And also, they can also do it to teams, sadly, like Brighton. This ended in 5-0. Raheem Sterling with the hat-trick. It could have been more. But um, that man right there, Raheem Sterling, I mean, that made it 27 goals for the season. That's on level with Messi, by the way, in all competitions. So that, And with that goal-scoring drought that we spoke about in three, four months, he's a player that I think is... We, we, we're worrying about getting goals at times, saying, can Jesus fill Aguero's void? But Sterling's doing it there on his well, own. Well, worry, because, I, listen, I, I had Sterling as top goal scorer. I, I sent a tweet oh, did you say it, Sean? Yeah. the season. I said, Sterling for top goal scorer. So uh, there'll be people that will say, yeah, he did say that. I said Sterling for top goal scorer. There's reasons behind it. Yeah, and he also went through the loose spell. But I have, to, I have to bring attention to that. He scored a goal. It was a typical go-to goal. <laughs> I like Get that. that. I, have, I like that. That is, that is a go to goal. That's a go to goal. You know nothing about it. It just comes off the head and goes, Of course I meant that. <laughs> <laughs> of course I meant that. Of course I meant that. <laughs> you don't, you don't care, do you? Goes don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, he's in ridiculous form. He's, he's, he's brilliant. But, but that's the thing, Sean. When do you stop calling it form? Because form, it means that it's. It, he can't do it all the time, but he's doing it, he's doing it all yeah. the time. So it's not even form, it's just the way he plays now. And that's the great thing about Raheem. And I can't believe as well that we're looking at yesterday was his five-year anniversary of signing for the club. It literally feels like about five minutes ago. It's gone so fast. <laughs> Brilliant. I've seen some of the tweets that people have put out when he joined. Oh, Piers Morgan. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> what a waste of money yeah. they were saying. Oh, Twitter's been fun for a few yeah. days now, it has. He, he's been absolutely exceptional, but... I like the maturity. We're seeing him as a player mature and, and off the field, we're seeing the maturity of him. Uh, so he's consistent on the field, but we're seeing him be that leader off the field as well. So yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if he's, say, the captain of the club yeah. next year. He wouldn't, uh, and England also. It wouldn't surprise me. He's got that kind of yeah. aura. He's got that demeanor. And when, when he, he doesn't speak that often, but when he does, you listen. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's the kind of thing players respect the most. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's definitely hugely grown over the over the five years. I remember I interviewed him um, five years ago when he when he joined. He did we did um, a little event on the pitch, and I think I was one of the first to interview him when he joined. And he was so shy. He was so shy. They had to pull him over, and he was like, "Do I have to?" And now you see him doing interviews, and like you say, he's so confident and he's so mature. And um, I think that's a really big statement, Jolie, and a future club captain that I actually hadn't 
thought about already, but he is really, like you say, Sean, becoming a huge role model off the pitch as much as he he is on the on the pitch as well. And and he's sitting at the minute fifth fifth goal scorer in the top goal scorer in the Premier League at the minute. And when you look at the people above him, you know, obviously it's like Jamie Vardy, Abami Yang, Danny Ings, Salah. And then, and then him on, on 17, and he could easily sort of finish higher up there. He just seems to get better and better and yeah, better. Yeah, but I'm sure all them players take penalties as well. So I'm sure if you add a couple of them to, to Raheem's kind of ream, I, I'm surprised that anyone is outscoring Sergio whilst he's at the club. Um, I know he's missed games for injury and that, and that's kind of the only reason why someone would, for me, I thought as long as Sergio is at the club, no one would outscore him. But the fact that Raheem is doing that is, is tremendous. Yeah, Sergio, is, you know, the, the ratio goals per minute is 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 crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And like you say, Sterling to be uh scoring more than him and we know he's went through that little that little spell, uh has come back in good form now. I, I just love the composure he has now when he's when he's around girl, you know, um there's the girl, girl. Girl, girl. Girl, girl. Hey, girl. Love it. <laughs> of course I meant it. That's why yeah. Of course I meant it. <laughs> there, was, there was a great clip as well, Pep, Pep asking him as they were, they were walking off if he meant it. And he was like, yeah, no, I definitely Oof. meant it. Yeah. But Sean, you're great to ask because if you remember before the season, and it's, it's amazing that you called it so early on, there was the big question mark about Raheem Sterling's finishing. So what have you seen him do to be able to put the ball in the back of the net like he has been doing on a more or less consistent basis, bar that little two, three month drought? Well, you know that because you just know that you, you have to, if he finishes, if he finished with 12, 12 goals, I can't remember what he did last season. You want to improve more. You want to be talked about with the best because you're training with the best. So I knew that that was always going to improve. So I, I knew that he'll look at his finishing uh, and, and look and analyze and say, perhaps I, I had more time than I thought. Um, and, and players do it. Rather, defenders look at their games and analyze. He would be looking at when he's having attacks and, uh, and perhaps he should have went around the keeper or he should have loved the keeper. He should have did whatever, but he would be analyzing that and therefore he'll get better. And, yeah. and we're seeing that. We're seeing that now. But the added incentive for Raheem is that if he gets five or six more goals, which is easily achievable, he can, we're talking about Ballon d'Or. You're not talking about just being City's top goal scorer. You're talking about world honours and being recognised as the best player in the world for that season. So they're the kind of incentives that he must be looking at now. If, if I was capable of, of that ability, then you, you would be looking at that. Sorry, I just have to take a second there because it's amazing to hear you say that. But then you also go, well, you've also got Kevin De Bruyne. Like, how incredible to be talking about Manchester City and straight away there's two names that come into mind for Ballon d'Or contention. I just ne I'd never, you never think you'd see it, would you? But it feels like as well that it's not just them two. There are players that are younger and also kind of still learning their craft that also have the ability to reach their level if they work hard and keep the, the right mindset. 100%. The only downfall with that is they're all in play for Man City. So you, it's going to be hard to recognise them all at the same time because only one person can win Man of the Match. Yeah. <laughs> so if Kevin De Bruyne's winning it, that means Raheem's not. So that's the kind of only reason why... People won't like it's this case of Iniesta with Messi. Iniesta's been unreal, but because he's got Messi in the team, you kind of you don't see as much. You know what I mean? So that'll probably be the only fact in regards to them two. But in terms of the levels they've set and the consistency, it's ridiculous. And speaking of goals, finally, that I think looks like we're going to be on course to finish the Premier League as the highest goal-scoring team. We currently sit on 81 goals. And when you look across the, the other leagues, you know, PSG... I like that little one, yeah. <laughs> Do you like hey, that one, Sean? I'll like throw that. that one your hey, way. It'll drop the mic for a minute. <laughs> you know, that one. <laughs> Pep's, out. Pep's out. applauding from out there, yeah. just so he can hear it. But, you know, PSG was 75 goals there. Barcelona there on 80, so we're ahead of them. Um, I think the only team that have scored more than us is Bayern Munich uh, and Atlanta, who have got the 80 seven goals but we went to 93 goals i've seen that's good yeah it's, good score. I, I, it's it, they I, but when we saw them in the champions league yeah. I, they were they were a great great team i think oh yeah the way they moved it and and how they were creating chances and you're looking and thinking well hold on here like, who, who am i watching here yeah and, and you, you start to you know when you're a student at a game you start thinking okay who's this manager i need to because they they surprised me in the way they were uh, attacking creating chances and it just shows they've gone on to continue doing that um, a big part, obviously, of the amount of goals that we scored this season, well, is, is, is Gabriel Jesus. He hit his 20th goal of the season um, against Brighton. Another player, I think, Sean, that perhaps has um, taken a little bit of maybe negat negativity from some parts um, of, of the world of football. And I think maybe it is because he um, is often compared to Sergio Aguero. And like you've already said, how do you, you can't fill yeah. Sergio Aguero's boots. And, that, and that's the problem because 
he's got a good racket, you know. Amazing. Jesus has got, yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's because Sergio is st rackets and stats are just like crazy. And so you think, well, okay, if you're not scoring like Sergio, a goal, I don't know if it's every 90 something minutes, three minutes, or <laughs> I, it's, it's stupid. So he's, I think he's something like every 130 minutes or something like that, 40 minutes. And you just think, that is not a bad stat. But I think it's just a comparison to Sergio that, but for me, I think this is what he's needed. This this opportunity where he knows he's the main main guy and it's unfortunate Sergio is out because then the confidence will start coming back, the arm around the shoulder. Listen, you're the best man, you know. Hey, you're the best striker for me. <laughs> We've all had those talks. 100%. As yeah. players, you know, like, the competition for places is great, but when he's feeling coming in for Sergio and there's rotation, you feel you have to score because I know Sergio's going to score, so I have to score. And now he doesn't have the added pressure of having to score. He's going to play next game. You're going to play the game after that because you're the only fit striker. So the expectation and the pressure you put on yourself probably dies down and all of a sudden you're relaxing. And we, and we find him in the more prolific positions now. We've just seen him in the middle and his goals are just, just there. Just be there because he's going to come and these lads will provide for you. Also as well, and Cheeky mentioned it when we heard from him at halftime against Newcastle talking about that. Actually, Jesus, the work that he does off the ball, it's comparable to like Bernardo Silva, the way that he runs. And actually, yeah, you can't compare him to Aguero for the goals, but you also can't compare him to Aguero because I feel they're two very different strikers. And as Jesus has matured, we're starting to learn who is Jesus as a striker? Is he the goal scorer, the worker off the ball, the, the one who will be the poacher's finish? I think we're starting to see his game. I think we... we Yes, we will. And I think, I think it's a combination of all three. When he first came, we saw how brilliant he was. And we were just like, whoa, it's competition there, him and Sergio. Uh, and his, gonna, you know, his work rate, uh, I think, is phenomenal. Because you see him run. It reminds me of Dickie. Yeah? Sometimes Dickie <laughs> used to run and chase people. Yeah. I was thinking, what are you doing, mate? It's, <laughs> stupid, it's stupid. Next thing, he comes away with the ball. Yeah. <laughs> but with him, again, it's the same thing. Pressuring players to make them, force them into a mistake. And if City's winning the ball anywhere in the final third, well, that's what we end up with, a goal. Because of the pressure that, that he's essentially, essentially made. So his work rate is, uh, is so vitally important. Also to, the part, to, to his game as well. Final comment on this before we talk about tonight's opponents, Bournemouth. The, the season and last season, all we ever heard about for me was the front three of Salah, Mane, Firmino. But I think that an, a front three that has been overlooked is our front three. Granted, it's changing, but even if you just were looking at Jesus, Sterling and Mares, the goals between them have, have just been on par. And if not, they, I think they work a bit harder as a collective. Yeah, in, in regards to the goals and stuff, yeah, there's much of the same. Um, but if you take out, say like one of the wingers in Liverpool's team, the goals drastically drop, where that's not the same with our front three. Any front three that they put in, get a number of goals. I think if they was all to play the 38 games for the season, I'd be confident all of them would reach 20 goals easily. And it wouldn't surprise me if it did, where you're looking at Liverpool's team, Firmino's not going to get you 20 goals. He brings a lot to what, to what Liverpool are about, 100% he does. But in regards to the, the goal threat, I think our, our front three are more prolific. It is that sun lie. It shows that City, we have, in, in terms of our wide players and front players, they all have over 10 plus goals. That Liverpool don't have that. Yeah. So Julian's is exactly right. You know, you take out one of their players, then that, that, that goal just decreases their, their goal ratio. Whereas City, you, you bring in Mahrez if he hadn't been playing, and, and all of a sudden he's got two games, you go, oh, he scored a goal, he's assisted one. You know, so, so the consistency uh, with, with our players is issues there. I love as well, and I think this sums up a Pep Guardiola team, is that a lot of their goals for me feel quite, you know, individual. You see individual moments of brilliance. It always feels like a collective. So when Jesus is scoring, it's come from the Mares assist. Or when Mares is scoring, it's come from the Jesus work off the ball and then Sterling putting the ball pack across. Yeah, you could say that again, but you, we've got to give them a lot of respect and credit for what they've achieved this season. And the way they play allows them to do that. It sets them up to kind of, say, press and, and win it back in areas that, you, you leave Salah 1v1, or you leave Mane 1v1, so then it looks more, it may look like an individual right, goal, yeah. but the setup to that and what they've created allows that to happen. So it's just a different style of playing. I don't think, well, it's evidently season, it's worked for them. But in, in regards to what we are accustomed to seeing and what we enjoy seeing the most, definitely the way that Pep's got this team playing. 
Thank you, Jolene. Um, so tonight's opponents, Bournemouth, had a mixed bag of fortune since the restart. Of course, fighting it out there in the relegation zone gave themselves a slight glimmer of hope. Here is what Eddie Howe said ahead of tonight's game. I think naturally winning, uh, I've said all along in this difficult uh, challenge that we face, winning is everything. Winning breeds so many good and positive outcomes from it that um, it was what we absolutely needed. Um, and you can see a lift in the players, a, a bounce in their step, um, renewed confidence, renewed belief. Um, so we now go into three games left and we go in with a very into the, the three games with a very positive mindset. Manchester City, um, very uh, different game really from any other that you face in the Premier League. I think they've got unique qualities, an outstanding coach, a, a, a brilliant team. So. Um, we're going to have to be elevated to levels um, maybe that we haven't given this season to to get a result, but we're capable of doing that. I think tactically it's something that we'll prepare for, try and give the players the, the information that they need and uh, hope that we deliver, as I say, probably are, are going to need our best performance of the season to get anything in this game. And there are the Bournemouth team warming up on the Etihad pitch. Um, Eddie Howe there talking and, and speaking of that that win that he was talking about, let's give them renewed confidence. Of course, massive 4-1 win over Leicester. Before that, they'd kept the goalless draw against Spurs. So, I mean, these, these aren't a team that are going to go down without a fight. So that's something that I'm sure all the City players and Pep will be aware of that they're going to be coming out literally fighting for their lives, which is a whole different challenge in itself, Sean. Yeah, City be well aware of, of Bournemouth and their threats and, and will respect that uh, and know that City will not go into this game and just think, well, they've had a hard season, difficult season and not been in form or, any, you know, that they can just go walk this game. Uh, this is what I love about what Pep and how we approach his games. They're always, whether it's Barcelona, whether it's Liverpool, whether it's Bournemouth, you know, the players are always there and at it and, and it'll be no different. Uh, I like everything that Eddie Howe, you know, it's a shame he, as, a, as a team that where they are, but I love everything when I hear him talk, the Great. intelligence and um, he, he is a, a manager that you'd want to play for. You know, he, he wants to play the game in the right way. Uh, and it's just unfortunate they're where they are. So, but um, I have no sympathy for tonight. No, no sympathy <laughs> for tonight. But I, I, I'm with you. They are a team that I've very much really enjoyed having in the Premier League. I think it's five, five years in the Premier League th this season. And where do you think, can you pinpoint where it kind of has, has dipped off for, for Bournemouth? And what have you made of their season, Jolien? Obviously, in previous years, they've always had a, um, a player that scored between what, 10 and 15 goals. They haven't had that this season. And defensively, they've never been great. If you look at the stats, they, they never suggest they've been able to rely on keeping clean sheets. I don't even know realistically when their last one was. So having to, to, to know you're going to have to do that or outscore City at home, is a normally realistic ask. So you're going to need to rely on something that you've not done so far in, in recent weeks. So to keep a clean sheet here is, is a tall order for them and it's going to be a difficult game. Well, Natalie has got the team that Manchester City will be facing this evening. Thank you very much, Kel. So in goal for Bournemouth will be Aaron Ramsdale. Um, and the rest of the team is Diego Rico, Steve Cook, Jack Stacey, Lloyd Kelly, Philip Billing... Jefferson Lerma, Junior Stanislasi, oh my, Stanislas, Stan, honestly, well I'm the world's worst person at Good pronouncing. Recovery. Good Stanislas. recovery. Stanislas, thank than me. you. Thanks, guys. Dan Gosling, Joshua King, and Dominic Solanke. And Dominic Solanke, of course, scored in the big win against Leicester at the weekend. And it was his first goal in 39 Premier League games. Sean, I don't remember you ever having a goal drought, ever. I'm surprised they haven't called, even Sean. If, <laughs> even hey. if you include a training, I don't think I went that long. <laughs> I feel for him because, you know what, they, when I first saw him come on the scene, I liked him. I said, this guy looks sharp, he looks agile, that, that nip, you know, you need that sharpness as a striker. Um, and I thought, OK, he's come through a good pedigree, Liverpool and all that, but he just couldn't find a goal. And he's, you can't go 30-something games without scoring. You just can't. So I, 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 I'm pleased he scored the other night, but I don't know, you know, will that be something where he can go on? It, it, that's a lot of games. It's, yeah. I mean, that's a season. That's a whole yeah, season. That's a whole league, league campaign. So it, it's tough. And, and, and I know Dominic worked with him at England. And in such a, as a footballer, you... you look at and, and see 
he's such a great footballer to look at, but does he want to get the ugly goals? Like, if you look at his two goals on the weekend, they were nice goals. And I don't know if he's going to be the one that's sliding into kind of like the Vardy goal in the same game. Is he going to be that guy that slides into the defender on the line that's just willing to get it in by any means necessary? And that's sometimes when you've gone so long, Sean will know better than me, when you've gone so long without scoring, Ooh. that's what you need. <laughs> no, not because you know about the mean regards to all that experience. Because yeah, I don't, yeah. I, honestly, I don't think I went 38 games. Right. <laughs> there it is. I don't think I went 38 Coming games. Dominic himself. <laughs> Dominic's like that. Another bar shell. Julian's like that now. Oh, what you no, want to no. do is we're in the box. Game. <laughs> Dominic's like that. What do you know? Go. What do I know, young man? What do I know? 41 goals says no, I know but a lot. They're, to be fair, that's appearances. So they could have been like coming on for like yeah. one or two minutes. So it's hard to kind of judge a striker when he says a 38. 39 appearances. So, so we're half it then. Yeah, 20 games. But what, yeah. what, what? 18 games. games. 18 games. 18 yeah. games. And he's got two goals, so that's one in nine. So that's not too bad. That's, that's not too bad. <laughs> but, that's a friends and family statement, that one. <laughs> sure. But you know him. You know him. So you, exactly. You said it right there. Because I don't know him too much as to his style of game. But just saying, he doesn't get those ugly goals. And when, you're, when you are going six, seven, eight games without scoring, you got yeah, to be in there to like get said, that that's ugly the, goal. The, the basis of where he's come from, he's come through Chelsea. So I'm, I'm guessing their academy and the team he was in yeah. dominated like most of the city's academies and, and age groups. And he went to Liverpool where they're used to having possession. Yeah. So I think it may be if he was more patient at them clubs, not that it's easy because they've got world superstars. Um, goals may have become easy to get his type of goals. Like when you go into a team that wants to play a certain way and doesn't have that much of the ball, yeah. all of a sudden now you're not getting four chances a game. You're getting four, one chance every four games. You know what I mean? So it's difficult. Very true. What what do you do then, Sean? I mean, if you know how how do you keep headstrong and not kind of let it get to you? The you know the fact another game goes by and you haven't scored, and then another game goes by. Like, I, I, what do you do in that 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 situation? Well, it's different things. I mean, I was one that uses sports psychology. Players don't say they use it, but they do. And I was one that used it. So even in training, when you're, you're in a, I mean, I can't imagine a spell like that. That's like serious. That's a serious <laughs> spell. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It, it is. As long as I went with scoring, I think it was nine games, maybe ten. So, so, I mean, the stuff I used to do was even after training, uh, after every training session, would get a bag of balls and I only want to hit the net three times consecutively before I finished. And because I, and, and what, I mean clean strikes. So I'll just get the ball up my feet, shift it, and strike it clean right. and hit the net. So that, doing that consistently. That sort of got my confidence going. So it had nothing to do. Sorry with that, Bartes. Yeah, sit down. <laughs> yeah, sit down. <laughs> wow. Is that, that, is that, that black and white? Is that, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love this one. Keepers giving me chances. See ya. Uh, was that the year you got promoted? That was the season. Yeah, I played against you. That was my day. That was season uh, for Wolves, yeah, yeah. against Forest. Oh, oh, oh Sean. Sean. <laughs> Can I just, I have to say, because I've been wanting to say it all show. I, I'm please bear with me. Genuinely, Sean, you were my favourite player growing up as, 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 a, as a young lad. And there's oh, a, no, I was no, a, no, 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 the greatest you know of all mean? time. The reason he's called the goat for a reason. Thank you very much. <laughs> his surname there's, is the goat. That's yeah. why. There's a picture where I was I was a mascot uh, when we played Stockport away, and somewhere at home there is a there is a young Kellen, and literally just buzzing my head off. In front uh, of you. But stop you it, did, I mean, you've got to, Sean. If you like the stats, there we go. I'm gonna throw a couple more your way. You were the uh, were the city's top scorer for for four seasons on the run. You scored 30 goals when we returned to the Premier League in 01 and 02, oh, yeah. and then even. When with new signings that following year, still finished top scorer. 30 league goals. There you go. 30 league goals. What do you want me to say? I can't say nothing, man. <laughs> so, so imagine if I'm getting fed with David Silver in disguise. Oh, oh, hey, hey, <laughs> now, listen, that's what I want to see on the testimonial. I want to see David Silver feeding the goat. Feed the goat. There we go. There won't be a change of pace, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Didn't you play with Ali Benabia, though? Did yes. he not count? Oh, <laughs> don't bring up his name. Oh, yeah. Don't bring oh, up his name. Okay. Oh, Benabia. Well, he got me set off. Let's let's yeah. dive in. Natalie, that's the perfect segue to enjoy this. Just talk us through here he is, lovely Benavia. Dive in. Dive in. And then that's, oh. that's a red card. <laughs> that's not a red that? card. Uh, you know Who what? was that? I like the rules. What's this? How many rules? One. Yeah. Two. <laughs> Look. Three. Four. Love it, Ellie. Love it, Ellie. Red card. <laughs> Well, that, that game, um, it actually fit. <laughs> yeah. Julian knew. Julian, the, the team talk was, that was my last red, That was my last red card, that. I was it? Yeah, I remember getting sent off there and then the coach saying to me, uh, 
this can't happen. Like I think I've been set off in, my, in the season before, and he said, you can't be getting sent off. Like, that can't be attached to you. And I was like, okay, then. So that was it. No more red cards. No, I mean, that, but that game finished. Uh, what that kids, that's how you learn. You learn from your mistakes, <laughs> kids. <laughs> but no, that, that's brilliant as a yeah. defender, recognizing that, okay, I don't want to be attached to a, a, a son and a half that gets red cards. Because it's easy to go back down and just go slam players. And the worst thing is, I, I couldn't slide tackle. Like, that wasn't a skill set I had. I didn't like. People just assume that's easy to do. So when it's you not... tackled me all those days, do, yeah, that those was just... were slide tackles? Like this? <laughs> <laughs> and it was I'm everything there, yeah. I'm I'm there to see, to yeah, be I'm honest, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> I'm like, referee, kind of, you're taking yeah. me out. And it's not something you can, like, you can learn to do that. <laughs> like, you can't really learn in training to slide tackle your teammates. So it, yeah. it was not something I had naturally. So I, I just thought, no, let's not try that. What is, what is the art, uh, in, just in, what is the art to a, to a good slide tackle? Because like you say, players have either got it or they haven't. Like, for all the times Otamende does go to ground, when he gets it right, he gets it right what yeah. is the timing, is the timing yeah because you, like when you look at it most players that miss time the tackle tackle where the ball is or they attempt to tackle and players feet are so fast now they move the ball so you have to try and tackle where the ball's going to go go right so and all of a sudden players assume that's going to happen and then they flick it into your foot because most of the time you'll see the, the attacking player kick the ball into the opposing players or to the defending players' foot rather than him tackle the actual ball. Ah, right, okay. There we go. I That's miss a good head. hard Kids slide. Need no slide, pads slide. Hey, <laughs> kids need no pads for this one, you know. <laughs> hey, this is... Flip over, break that stuff, dog! <laughs> My coaching head on that is, you know what I mean? Hey, listen, that's I'm the... get my veggies soon. <laughs> Pep, watch out. This is the beauty of we're not really here. We're not just post pre-match show analysis. We get into the training. We get into the highlights. We cover it all here on the we show. We embarrass ourselves all the time. Yeah. And, um, Sean, I completely embarrassed myself. I'm like, Kel, you were my absolute hero growing up. Still are, still are before, before Julian comes in there. And I saw you, you were in the crowd at Old Trafford. It was a, I want to say, a Carling Cup set semi-final now I wasn't even a kid at this point I was like 20 um, and you were in the crowd you walked up the stairs and I started crying crying my eyes I was <laughs> Sean Gota the funniest thing right the funniest thing about that whole experience I wanted to go and feel the experience as a city fan because we feel it on the yeah, field yeah, yeah. we feel it but you want to be in that crowd going mental where we score like ah <laughs> We lost that game. Oh, of course. <laughs> Typical yeah. city. So I was like, no, oh my God. Typical <laughs> city. <laughs> my City fan experience was before I even played for the club. I went to Old Trafford to watch the um, the game where they wore the the, sh the special shirts. And yeah. um, Benjani scored two. Oh, yeah, and he did yeah, that celebration. It, yeah, it was Father's Day, so I took my dad to the game. So like, he was up and we was just, I said, come on, we'll, we'll go to the game. So that was my first fan experience as City. And I think that's when associated. we were impeccable. That was the... Um, when the, the, it was announced over the town, oh, thank you, City fans, you were impeccable. Impeccable. <laughs> That's where that came they from. They were talking oh, to me. Ah, they... <laughs> Do you know what, though? I think as well that I love nothing more than when you see a footballer out with the fans watching the game. Walker's yeah. been known to do it a lot at yeah. Sheffield. He, he's always seen up there. Um, Tommy uh, Doyle's been doing Tommy it lately. Doyle. And Taylor Harwood Bellis, I've yes. seen they're it. Real, no, but yeah. still, yeah, they're, they're... if they're doing that when they're 27, then yeah. But they're real, still real fans like... I got a story of Phil Foden when I did some work with the uh, England 21s and I seen him watching his training sessions. Um, so I just went to have a conversation with him and, and stuff. And he wanted to talk to me about the, 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 the 2012 game because he's saying he ran on the pitch with his mum. Oh. I'm saying, Phil, you're just about to win the league. Like, yeah. You're going to win it yourself. Why do you care? Like yeah. he said, nah, that moment there. What, what was it like? I'm saying, but well, you're training with David. You're training with Serge. Yeah. They, were, they were the guys that were actually were... doing it. Yeah. It was just crazy to hear an actual fan that now plays for the club. It's ridiculous. And for us City fans, it's the absolute dream. Um, OK, we're not too far away from kickoff. Um, just over five minutes. So looking ahead to the game, uh, predictions from your good selves, my friends. Jolian. <laughs> Would you like to kick us off? I'm going to pay a little bit more respect to, to Bournemouth than what these two are going to do. I'm going to say 3-0 <laughs> City. Ooh. Okay, keeping the clean sheet, we like it. Sean? I'm going, I, I said 4-0 earlier when we were talking off air, but I'm going 5. 5. I've I'm been... being respectful. Yep. <laughs> Does it sound like it, Sean? Does it sound it. like it? <laughs> and Natalie? I'm just going to go 4, aren't I? And then that leaves you with... Um, six. Six, six or two. Yeah. Yeah, maybe two. <laughs> the thing is, though, it, yeah, yeah, I'll go for six. I'll back six. Yeah, definitely as well. That's the thing, and it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't shock me that you say that. You, you can't though. Because Nets gave a stat. She said nineteen goals in five games. None conceded. There you go. You see. 
Well, Bournemouth have not beaten us in the last eight games. Eight games against Bournemouth. I don't know. The result, I'm not, I'm not concerned about. I believe City are going to win, but... Five no, it's just disrespectful to say. Even though I believe that could happen, it's disrespectful <laughs> it's to just pull out there. Yeah, and also it will be us all left with egg on our face if we come back and it's not the result that we want. But it will be very confident here in the studio. I hope you are at home too. So we're going to be back at half time, and we'll also be joining you at full time for full time analysis. Hopefully, hear from a player and a coach. And while we are on City TV, there's a brilliant documentary that's just come onto there. Um, this show is for the fans, and it is about a fan that has not missed a single home game. His name is Arnie. Please do check that out when you have a spare moment. It's a, it's a beautiful watch. We'll see you at half time. Enjoy the game. Que mais te chamou a atenção no novo protocolo de jogo? Não ter torcida. In lockdown, I was 100% sure we we're going to play without fans. Yesterday is like, oh, it's a good goal. It's like, yay! That's the only thing you hear. And you're like, oh yeah, okay, let's just go on with it. The fans are the biggest part of it. So it's about all the lads there and going there with your mate. And it's a gathering of friends and, and brothers, if you like, you know. It does feel odd to have my little house being beamed across the world and stuff like that, and then to have Pep coming into my living room and having a chat with him. But that's how it is now, isn't it? <laughs> something you don't want to really get used to, but at the moment it looks like you have to. You know when you are in dressing room, we are all close, we talk, we love him. This changed a lot. I think nobody has a choice, you know, what, 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 what can the club or the players do? Come on. The minute they open the turnstile, I'm through it. Squeezing through, of course. <laughs>